What is happening at the moment in the Middle East proves once again the adage, be careful what you wish for. The United States and Turkey have taken a monster step forward in going on a better offensive against ISIS. The Turks also would like nothing better than to see Syrian warlord Bashar al-Assad bounced. But then there's this matter of the Kurds, American friends and Turkish enemies. Our guest is retired U.S. Army colonel and author of Government is the Problem. Welcome back, Colonel Patrick Murray. Colonel, thanks so much for joining us. And when we talk about Turkey and America going to work against ISIS, is this a smokescreen for the Turks in many ways to go after the Kurds whom they have always seen as enemies? Ed, this has more plot twists and turns than a Tom Clancy novel. Look, Turkey has made a major policy shift with regard to ISIS and uh, they're moving significant combat assets down on that border with uh, their southern border with Syria. They've started making airstrikes again I against ISIS, and they're going to allow the United States to fly sorties out of their air bases in Turkey. But here's where it gets interesting in, in what you just mentioned. Turkey has also started whacking the PKK, which is the Kurdish Workers' Party. Um, we've designated them as a terrorist organization. They've been fighting them for years, although there's been a truce for a while. And the reason this is problematic is because the one group that's doing well against ISIS on the ground are the Kurds. So here's a phrase I want you to comment on. The image in the West of the Kurds as a reliable ally on the ground is terrifying for Turkey. Would you agree with that? It is for Turkey, yes, but there are different groups, subgroups within the Kurds as well, Ed. And uh, the Kurdish Peshmerga, uh, President Barsani, they, they are at odds with the PKK. And uh, it, it, so, so this, this cuts so many different ways. But the bottom line is that the Kurds have been uh, successful against ISIS on the ground. I know that gives Turkey great pause because the PKK wants an independent Kurdistan uh, in sovereign territory of Turkey. That's why Turkey invoked Article 4 uh, clause with NATO, uh, and they met today in Belgium. Can we trust Turkey as a government and also as a military ally? Well, Turkey is a, is a NATO ally, and uh, they have some legitimate concerns. ISIS has been much more active in Turkey, and ISIS is doing what they do. These intersectarian divisions, they've done it with Sunnis and Shias so well, and now they're going to start doing it with Kurds and Turks. That's just how they, that's how they operate. That's their MO. And uh, we have to watch the Turks. NATO today said we would like your assistance with ISIS, but at the same time, we'd like you to put aside your issues with the PKK because, you know, that we're, all, we're all dealing with a common enemy here. Fifteen seconds. Do you see the addition of Turkey here, the greater offensive, as a game changer? Potentially, yes. Militarily, at it's significant, especially allowing us to fly out of our bases. Now, whether or not Barack Obama decides to take advantage of that, who knows, because he has shown very little desire to really take the fight from the air to, the, to, the, to ISIS. And so while it's a lot closer militarily, we still have to make the policy decision to take advantage of that. Always comes back to the policy. Colonel Patrick Murray, always a pleasure to have you on the show, my friend. Thanks so much for your time. Now, at the heart of this is the matter of Syria as well, a battle America has been trying to avoid for some time, but seemingly must become deeper involved with if it hopes to change the face of the Middle East. In Syria, as we speak, there are new radicals growing up, a new generation of those who will see America as an enemy. And at the moment, we seem to be powerless to do anything about it. Our guest is a great friend of the program, professor of Middle East Studies at Florida Atlantic University in Boca Raton, Florida, author of Salafism in Lebanon, From Apoliticism to Transnational Jihadism, and just returned from a trip to Lebanon, Professor Robert Rabiel. Good to see you again, my and friend. Boy, you, I'll tell you what, you were in some, you were in some tough places between Lebanon and Syria. What do you think, first of all, before I talk about your Please. trip there, what do you think about what we just discussed? The Turks, the PKK, America getting involved, is it going to make a difference? Well, it's going to make a difference, but it's going to be, uh, but it's going to be making a mixed difference depending how United States is going to steer the whole regional country's effort against ISIS. I expected Turkey is going to do that. I expected Turkey is going to do that. And mainly, this is not only associated with the Kurds, but associated with what's happening inside Syria. Two factors now happening, and I know them because I was on the border uh, of Lebanon, Syria, and I met with a lot of people, and I did field research trips. The Turks, as other regional countries, including Jordan and Lebanon. They believe that now Iran is giving the Assad regime some lifeline, despite the fact it's shrinking. And second, the border 
under ISIS are becoming fixed. So the rest of the territories now, they are becoming contested by the regional countries. So we see now Turkey is going to go in and take and make a sphere of influence. And this is associated with what's happening domestically with uh, Turkey. Turkey does not like and will not allow an autonomous uh, Tur Kurdish region next to its border. It's extremely important. And this is where it has brought together the two and it's fighting again the Kurds and, the, uh, and ISIS at the same time. I only have 60 seconds. Yes. You talk about a lost generation of Syrians who you think will become the next Syrian Taliban. That bad? Well, let me, let me highlight one point. As a father, I am very disheartened of what's happening to the Syrian, and many of them are refugees. But also, as an American, I am worried, yes, because through that, the United Nations, the Lebanese government, and many NGOs are making wonderful efforts, but their efforts pale in the comparison to the sheer magnitude of the refugee problem. Lebanon now is, by now, in memory, it has the highest capita per refugee in the world. Over 4 million, you have 1.8 million refugees. And they are not all of them getting help. So, so yes. look to solve the refugee problem first or make it, make it a priority. Well, you have to make it a priority. Why? This is where I speak about the lost uh, generation, because they are not getting help and they fall prey to radicalization, to early marriages, to prostitution, and to all illicit act act sorry, activities. So this is the problem now. So glad that you're back safe. Thank we'll you. have you back on. We'll do Thank this again. Thank you. It's my pleasure, Ed. Boy, it's I'll my tell pleasure. you what you bring is some real honest about, honesty about what goes on there. Thank you. All right. Next up on Telling It Like It Is, the shame of being an American politician, when we continue on The Hard Line.